Hello everyone, watch this review here with a look at Mohawk from the second series of NECA's Mogwai line. Now when NECA first announced their Mogwai series, Mohawk was the one I was most looking forward to. Now I've always kind of liked his character, I don't know if it's just because he's a ringleader, maybe it's because he has the kick-ass Mohawk, but there's something about his design always really appealed to me. And, you know, when you first saw the sculpt, it honestly looked great, but I held off uh, picking him up, just because NECA has a rather horrendous uh, reputation when it comes to quality control, and even this version for this copy isn't really great. But I figured I'd rather buy it at retail than take a risk getting it online and not knowing what defects I'd be getting. Now he does have a real cloth or real fabric -y material mohawk as opposed to just sculpting. I'm not sure if I like that, but it does sort of add a sort of cool vibe to it. In general, I just prefer having things of just one solid material. Especially when it comes to plastic versus some sort of fabric, as plastic does stay quite a bit better. Now the other figures in the third wave are Daffy and Combat Gizmo, who I haven't been able to pick up either. Um, even online, I think they're starting to become a bit more scarce, but I'll hopefully I'll get those two eventually as well. I, of course, already own and reviewed George and Lenny. But uh, hold on a second, and I'll get him out of box. And here we have Mohawk out of package, and let me start by saying, Happy Thanksgiving if you're watching this Thanksgiving Day. A lot of people often forget that Gremlins 2 is a Thanksgiving movie, but yes, it is indeed set during Thanksgiving, much like the first one was set during Christmas. I believe this was done as sort of an intentional, I guess, parody of the original film, as so much of this film's kind of rips off, or not necessarily rips off, but spoofs the first one, even having sort of... I don't think they actually went into the Thanksgiving story, but they had the equivalent of the Christmas story with the Santa getting stuck in the uh, chimney. Yeah, that girl had a really messed up childhood, didn't she? At any rate, uh, Mohawk looks pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the eyes of mine are completely messed up. Again, you know, I couldn't wait to pick this one up. I finally got him at retail, just because I didn't want to buy him a line, because I figured the errors would be a lot worse, but I got him, and both the ones in the store had one of their eyes kind of, like, popped in a little bit, where it was sort of sunken a little bit, and I had to pick between the one with the sunken right eye or the one with the sunken left eye. Now, the sink isn't so much an issue when you have the pressure put right on the back of the eye roller, much like the previous ones, uh, you know, they do have the eye rollers for these. A lot of people don't like them. I'm beginning to understand why. Uh, the first ones didn't so much give me trouble, but this has been a nightmare. Uh, if you really want to, you can sort of get the eyes the way you want them, then just tape the thing in place. It shouldn't be an issue ever again. But other than that, you know, it's kind of cool to at least have the eyes, even if they don't necessarily line up as nicely as on the other ones. It gives you, um, you know, so much additional expressiveness to the character when they actually are lined up. Ugh, I hate that. It's annoying. Now, just like with Lenny and... I keep almost saying Carl, but it's not Carl and Lenny. That's weird. Hmm. Huh. The lower jaw kind of moves, but I don't know if it's designed as articulation or not, or... So I don't think it can actually stay in place, and there's nothing to actually control it. Huh. Very cool, though. But just as with the case of Lenny and George, here's George, uh, they sort of use the same general body mold, and then they create a new head sculpt for each figure. Of course, with Lenny, they also buffed up his height a bit by attaching an additional piece to the top of it, but... You know, it's all the same basic mold with the same articulation and so forth. Now, what sort of sets Mohawk apart is the fact that he gets his own cloth Mohawk here, which is sort of glued in place. I'm not sure how I feel about that. 
On one hand, I do really prefer having plastic parts because they stay better. On the other hand, you know, it does sort of give the character, you know, some additional personality and so forth. Because you can sort of adjust it however you want. But then you can sort of see how it's glued in stuff in the front, which kind of sucks. Kind of very, very sucks. Now, again, just because NECA's quality control is awful, I would suggest trying to find these and hold them in hand before you buy them, because you might get one with a completely botched paint job. It happens. I mean, I've seen the other ones before at retail with some general issues. Uh, mine doesn't have that much. I mean, they should have gone with a whiter coating in the front here, because some of the black portions showing through, and I don't think it's quite lined up. I mean, it's not really bothersome or anything. Uh, Mohawk is a really great looking figure. And once again, to give you a sort of idea of scale, here's the previously released, well, from an older series, the Mohawk Gremlin. So, yeah, that is basically the proper size. Very cool looking, the two of them side by side. I do hope that they'll eventually redo this with a new style. The newer stuff's just so much better. Now, I've probably said this a dozen times, Mohawk was by far my favorite Gremlin in the Gremlins franchise. Even to an extent more so than Gizmo, which I know sounds crazy, but... Yeah, there's just something to like about him. Both his Mogwai form and Gremlin form. Although he goes kind of nuts in the Gremlin form. Where he sort of just goes off, does his own thing, lets the other ones kind of run the operations. Of course, it's off-tangent. What's also interesting is these do seem to be newly sculpted ears. I'd have to compare it against Lenny's, but I believe it's a new sculpt as well. They're nothing like George's here. I don't know. I mean... Again, you know, so much of the information that I'll tell you is the same stuff I previously covered. Because there aren't, really aren't that many unique elements to this. It's basically just the new head sculpt. And, of course, the new ears, probably. But, I mean, that's really all you might need, because they were all sort of the same height and everything in the film. Or at least close to it. And the end result is pretty cool. But to give you a general idea of articulation... We have some ear movement here, forward, back, and then a full range of rotation. Of course, you don't want to rotate it more than a point, because it feels like it starts to scrape, and then, I don't know, there's really no reason to do it anyway. Uh, his neck motion is a little bit impeded by his beard. I always thought that beard was so cool. Plus, he's also the only one, I think, that has their teeth exposed. I haven't seen... I can't remember if Daffy has his... But I believe he's the only one with the teeth exposed. And you can see that his teeth are all little and spiky and stuff, which is so cool and cute at the same time. I know for a fact that Stripe doesn't have his, his shut mouth, and then the other sort of generic gremlin whose name I can't remember, they created it anyway. He didn't previously have a name, but he also has his mouth shut, so... It is very cool seeing that they're sort of this... Well, I mean, the teeth sort of just denote the fact that they are, like, evil and stuff, so you wouldn't necessarily notice that just by looking at the characters. At any rate, um, full range of rotation on the head, a little bit of up and down. Again, it kind of bumped the eye roller thing there, so now his eyes are off again. Um, ball and socketed shoulder, kind of. You really get a bit of rotation from it, then a tiny bit out. Sort of same deal at the elbow, if you can kind of call that an elbow. But even less movement. Full range of rotation. And then down at the wrist, we get the rotation very, very tiny in and out. Uh, legs, basically a non-usable. Gets a, forward, a little bit of forward back. A bit better than George does for some reason. Sorry, I'm just thinking, yeah, this is George, right? Lenny was the other one. 
and I remember that because of um, Shoot of Mice and Men, because Lenny always goes, what about the rabbits, George? Will there be rabbits? So it means George is the other one. At any rate, yeah, forward back, you'll notice they didn't paint this joint in. Then a full range of rotation, so he is a bit better than the George that I have here. So I can't seem to get his legs to really move that much. Well, maybe it's just sort of jammed in place. Yeah. At any rate, uh, Mohawk is definitely a pretty decent figure. Maybe even a great figure. You know, definitely a figure that I sort of had a smaller version that I probably showed off some of the other reviews that I cherished for a good number of years. And, you know, while that one will probably have a very special place in my heart, uh, this will probably have a place right beside it. In my heart, anyway. On the shelf, it's actually going in a completely different section. I'll be with the rest of these. And Lenny, whenever I find what I did with the Lenny. I don't know how I replace, how I misplace Lenny. Yeah. At any rate, here, this has been a look at Mohawk. Until next time, folks.